On today's episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, we are taking a look at everything that you need to know for the Tampa Bay Lightning New York Rangers Game 5. We have a series, baby, and the Tampa Bay Lightning are starting to pick up steam. Is it going to be enough to push the Rangers off? Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at some big-time bets, Game 5 analysis, Game 4 breakdowns. It's an extravaganza of Eastern Conference hockey, and I hope you're here for it because we are. Let's ride. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Party people in the place to be, a.k.a. tuned in to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Monday to Friday, baby, you know where to find us. Across all platforms, you find your favorite and hottest content. Thank you so, so much for making us your very first listen every single day. You know Steele and I really appreciate that. So continue to hammer that subscribe button. We push clear past 100 subscribers and also Steele. This is over 100 episodes for you and I, my friend. And on today's episode, we're well over 100. And all that really matters is you are here to get what you need to hear about this beauty of a series emerging from the New York Rangers and Tampa Bay Lightning. The Tampa Bay Lightning draw it up all square at two games apiece in game four. A very beautiful piece of 60 minutes of hockey end to end. We will be talking about that. Some injuries for the New York Rangers, some injury news for the Tampa Bay Lightning, all kinds of breakdown on today's episode, including big time bets for tonight's game five pivotal matchup back at Madison Square Garden. Can the Rangers continue to dominate on home ice? Steele and I are going to break it all down for you on today's episode, my friend. So thank you for being here with us. Steele, my co host, my brother. (laughs) <laughs> Rangers have been a hot topic on this conversation on this show. I'm intrigued to hear what you think about the performance in game four, because we wanted to give a little bit of credit to the Tampa Bay lightning. We want to talk about Igor Shesterkin. and there's a lot to talk about. So why don't you take it away? My friend, for what you saw in game four, I thought it was a great game. I thought it was back and forth. I think the Tampa Bay lightning did a great job of getting their depth guys in the scoring. They got goals from all around. Even Steven Stamkos was there. Uh, he popped one in uh, for the Tampa Bay Lightning in game four. But look, we've got ourselves a series now. I saw the Rangers actually going up 3-1 and then, you know, kind of going back and forth from there. But it's the best out of three for now. Uh, and this is why home ice advantage is so important in the playoffs because this can happen a lot. We saw that in the Carolina Hurricane series with the Boston Bruins, how every single game the home team won at, uh, at home. And we're seeing that right now with the New York Rangers and the Tampa Bay Lightning. So, It's a best out of three, and good luck to both these teams. Hey, and this is what we wanted to see after a pretty much of a lackluster series from the Edmonton Oilers and Colorado Avalanche, one that was an outcome that we all predicted. So this is a bit of a breath of fresh air to see a series that has all the makings of a seven-gamer. That's a little bit of a nice change because you know you and I, we want entertainment, baby. Give us some opportunity to gamble. Give us some more games because obviously (laughs) – The Edmonton Oilers just got dusted in four. But I think you immediately bring up a point that I think I wasn't ready to talk about and one that I think we should, and quickly, how good has Steven Stamkos been for the Tampa Bay Lightning? Once again, the Rangers have their boots on the throat of the Lightning in game three, up two goals, and it's really a testament to Steven Stamkos, Victor Hedman, all the leaders in that locker room because the Tampa Bay Lightning don't even flinch. They come back from that two-game deficit because, like you said, the Rangers were very close to going up three games in this series, and I think I just wanted to very quickly give some love to Steven Stamkos, the big guns on the Tampa Bay Lightning because the tide has turned in this series. I'm not ready to give up on the Rangers yet, but if they were able to get that game three, I know it's a lot of ifs here, Steel, but that would have been huge, and now here we go. Like you said, Best of three. I'm unsure what happens, but credit due to Steven Stamkos and the big guns on the Tampa Bay Lightning for getting it done. Yeah, he's been absolutely fantastic. And that was a pivotal pivotal moment in game three in the Mm -hmm. dying minute uh, in the third period. 
and Chris Kreider, you know, owned up to his mistake. And we talked about this in episodes, uh, a couple episodes ago. Yep. He was caught puck watching. Uh, he lost his man. Nikita Kucherov made an absolutely ridiculous pass yeah. uh, behind the back to Andre Palat for the game winning goal. And that was a momentum shifter, in my opinion. That that third, the game three was as back and forth as you could take, as you could see. And th- like you said, the Rangers were up two nothing. They had the they had the series in the palm of their hands, in their grasp, and they kind of let it slip away a little bit. Uh, a big mistake from Chris Kreider, which shifted the momentum going into Game Four, and that's what kind of just took it going. And, and Vasilevsky was huge in Game Four as well. Yeah, and I don't want to go backtrack too much because you know we want to talk about yeah. Game Four, and I think what we can get to next is. And again, credit due to the Tampa Bay Lightning because we know how good Mika Zibanejad has been. He has been the catalyst for the New York Rangers up front, at least, you know, really being the straw that stirs the drink. You know, I love that saying, but it's been true. And he's been really feeling it out there. And the fact that the Tampa Bay Lightning have been able to clamp him down and really limit him to absolutely nothing in game four, no chances. I think it was clear that the rest of that forward group felt that clamp down. And there you go. 4-1 4-1 final. That was a very neat and tidy performance. Maybe the score isn't as indicative as how close the start and maybe the second period was because I think that really there's a couple of moments that could have gone either way, but that's a point to be made. And I believe you also wanted to make a point about Igor Shosturkin's play. Yeah. Uh, you know, great, uh, great job by the coaching staff of the Tampa Bay Lightning to make those adjustments yes, on sir. me because they've been a jad giving him no yes, space sir. out there, but you're right. For me, the big problem in game four was Igor Shesterkin. Uh, I, I thought he played a solid game, but it was mostly his rebound control that was a, a substantial part of that loss for the New York Rangers in game four. On the first mm-hmm. one, first of all, you can't let Zach Bogosian come down this, the right side of the boards and yeah. toe drag you cutting into the slot, the most yeah. prime position to get shots off. And a weak backhander at that, and Shesterkin bobbles it, sending it right back out to Pat Maroon, who just mm. slaps it in the back of the net. Uh, sort of the same thing on the Stamkos on the Stamkos goal. Uh, he blockers it to the right corner, and he's not aware of who's to his right. And it's Steven Stamkos who just taps it in. So yes. I think that was the big problem for Igor Shesterkin. He was unable to control the rebounds and control the puck and get them out of the way, out of those dangerous scoring areas. Mm. And I think that's something he needs to refocus and regroup going into Game Five if the Rangers want to take the series lead. Look, you and I sometimes gas each other up because that's what we do. We're co-hosts, we're pals. But listen, you're crushing it on these key points of the game because imagine being the Tampa Bay Lightning and you're taking a look at this play from the bench and you have Zach Bogosian break down the wing, toe drag and put it on net. Like, let's take away from Shesterkin's inability to make a big play there. But then Patrick Maroon Maroon buries it for the fourth line goal. And that's how you start this game four for the Tampa Bay Lightning. You're jacked up through the roof, baby. That's hard to turn back from. So kudos due to you for bringing up that point. Because if that happens to you and you're the New York Rangers and you're going, was that Bogosian and Maroon? It's going to be one of those nights. So (laughs) anyway... That's one of those spots that, like you said, Shesterkin has to be better. That is the bottom line. We're going to talk about a lot more. A couple of big injuries for the New York Rangers. We will be talking big-time bets for Game 5 and a whole lot more for Game 5, including exactly who we think will be taking this bad boy. But what Steel and I have been taking lately? Athletic greens, good for the body, and good for your energy. What is this stuff? With one scoop of delicious athletic green supplement, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, probiotics, everything you need to start your day right before or after the gym. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, nervous system, immune system, your energy, helps you recover and focus. And one of the things that I need these days, it helps you age with grace. Right now, it is time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition Just one scoop of cup of water with this bad boy. That's all you need every single morning. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-boosting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your free first purchase. All you have to do is visit visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. That is Athletic Greens slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. 
Thank you for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. And real quick, we have an important favor to ask you out there. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about our listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On Podcasts. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It doesn't take very long. And once you complete a survey, you can qualify for a chance to win one of $1,000 ticket master gift cards. To take our audience survey, that is, again, LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. And thank you so much for your help. And thank you so much for tuning in to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast for today's episode. And Flip, you and I were just discussing the, uh, the, the amount of injuries that the Edmonton Oilers and the Colorado Avalanche just went through in that big series. You know, uh, Darnell Nurse with an injured hip flexor mm-hmm. for about a month. Uh, the Nazan Kadri injury, injury as well, which has put him out for the rest of the postseason. Now it's time to talk about the injuries from the Eastern Conference Finals. Yes, sir. Uh, Braden Point, the big name, a big question mark on him still. Uh, Philip Hedl and Ryan Strome from the New York Rangers. So some key guys for the Tampa Bay Light, or a key guy for the Tampa Bay Lightning and some, you know, some guys that the New York Rangers really need as uh, for their depth. Most definitely. And also this Philip Heedle injury might be bigger news than the Braden Point return from injury because the Tampa Bay Lightning have been, for the most part, getting it done without him. And yes, that would be a significant boost to their offensive arsenal, no doubt. But we know that Philip Heedle has been a catalyst on that kid line, along with Alexis Lafreniere, and I'm trying to blank on the third player in a capo caco. There we go. <laughs> but I think if Hedl can't go and Ryan Strom can't go, all of a sudden there's a couple of holes in that depth, and then you factor in a Braden Point return. All of a sudden things are starting to tip for this in the sides of the Tampa Bay Lightning, and I'm talking about those off-ice intangibles. Yes, it's still going to have to be played on the ice, and I'm not saying count out. This is an even series, baby. It's all square. Best of three. But those are some of those things, Steele, that you can't not help but notice, especially when we know what has been getting it done for these New York Rangers. It's rolling three lines, even four lines, and being able to effectively score at will. All of a sudden, the Andre Palats of the world are starting to heat up. Some of these depth guys for the for the Tampa Bay Lightning are starting to heat up, and then you insert a beauty of Braden Point. I don't know what you think about this, but these injury news is where I would keep your eyes locked if you're a Tampa Bay Lightning and New York Ranger fan, or better, because these will be the kinds of returns or omissions that are really going to tip the scales in terms of placing some wagers for this game tonight. Yeah, I think you're right. The bigger news is the Filipino and the Ryan Strom injuries. And to me, this just Mm. gives a bigger opportunity and a bigger stage to the guys that have been surrounding those players as well. Alexi Lafreniere, Capo Caco out there on the ice, uh, Frank Vetrano, Andrew Kopp, guys that really need to step up in the big moment now because look, home ice is huge in the playoffs. It's the, it's the big, it's one of the biggest advantages you can have in the postseason. And this is a best out of three series now. So even if you are down a couple of your depth players, you need some of your other depth players to step up in the big moments as well as your superstars. So even if the Tampa Bay Lightning are locking down Mika Zibanejad, Artemi Panarin, Chris yes. Kreider, Adam yes. Fox, yes. you guys need to step up in a big way as well. Hey, and that that's just it, right? Now all of a sudden, right, we were saying, oh, game one, game two, where's the depth scoring for the Tampa Bay Lightning? Are they going to be able to match up with the three lines that they're getting faced, you know, by the New York Rangers? Is that going to be something that ends up being their undoing? And it's almost like they listen to this show. If they were smart, they would listen to this show. And I'm sure there's a bunch of people hitting the subscribe button right now because they're smart as well. But they answered the bell. And, you know, I, I mentioned Andre Pallad a second ago, and this is a guy steal that I've had in a couple of formats over the last couple of years. And, you know, my my leagues are deeper formats. They're dynasty. So maybe some people are like, Andre Pallad, are you for real, Flip? But this is a guy who has been not only clutch for the Tampa Bay Lightning in the postseason with big-time moments, big-time goals, but all of a sudden, when his team needs him most, this guy has a three-point game in Game 4, And for DFS or any kind of prop betting, 
keep your eye on Andre Pilat because now all of a sudden the Tampa Bay Lightning, one of those weaknesses that we were calling out potentially, is now a strength. And like you said, you know, if Strom can't go and Filipino can't go, um, the options that are going to slot in for the New York Rangers immediately now put them a little bit behind the eight ball in terms of that depth. But what I was going to bring up at the same moment, Steel, is how good have the Rangers been on home ice? Can they answer the bell here? Because look, even serve, right? You're holding, you're holding serve at this point. I appreciate the fact that, you know, they were able to start the series off so hot. Gives them a little bit of a benefit of the doubt here. But look, I'm just intrigued. And I think you made the point that really holds true. And this is what this game comes down to for me. And we can allude to the big time bets here because that's what we do. Igor Shosturkin needs to step up big. He needs to step up in a big way. And I know Zibanejad has been so good still, but I'm looking right back to him because he is the leader of this team. And I expect him to bounce back in a big way as well. Stay tuned for big time bets. Igor Shosturkin, like he said, even though, even though, he probably doesn't care about my opinion or anything, even though I said he, he should is the best goalie. He should. But he should, but he probably doesn't because he's too busy in the Eastern That's Conference right. Finals. But we'll let look, it slide. He's, he said it himself. He's battling to him the best goalie in the NHL right now. And you know, we haven't seen I the agree. Tampa Bay Lightning. We haven't seen the the uh, we haven't seen Andre Vasilevsky lose after all you know back to back losses in the playoffs. And we just witnessed that. And what does he do? He goes back again and wins two games in a row in some pretty some pretty high fashion. So that's just what you expect from the back-to-back champions. You expect this from, you know, Steven Stamkos, Andre Vasilevsky, John Cooper making the adjustments on the fly, which he's need, which oh, he had to do yeah. against Mika Zibanejad. And that's just what champions do. So this is going to be a tough ride, but like, like Flip and I have said, this is why home ice advantage uh, is so crucial in the postseason. And they've only lost one time at home, right? And that was against the Pittsburgh Penguins. They, they are own. I believe they're eight and one at home, or seven and yeah, one, something. They've like They've been that. absolutely ridiculous this postseason at home, and and that's why <laughs> that's why home ice is such a crucial part in the postseason. We're gonna get to big time bets very very soon, but quick, I have to tell you guys all about Built Bar. Don't you just love a chewy chocolatey brownie? And what about a caramel brownie with caramel swirled on top? So good, right? What if I told you that you can have all the chewy chocolate deliciousness plus 17 grams of protein? You're in luck because caramel brownie bars are available at Built.com right now. And you got to act fast because this is a fan favorite right now. Forget about dessert. These are better than dessert. Plus the macros are absolutely off the charts. 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 4 grams of sugar. I would replace a regular brownie with Built's Caramel Brownie in a heartbeat. The best part, Caramel Brownie Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. You know this. It's right up my alley. I love myself some chocolate every single day. And with Built Bar, you don't have to sacrifice taste for healthy. You can have both. There are a million reasons that you should try Built Bar. But for now, let's just say that Caramel Brownie will rock your world. With Built. Tasty is the new healthy. So go to built.com, get your box of caramel brownie bars right now. If you go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. And I'll say it one more time so it's locked in your brain. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen Every single day, don't forget we are free and available on all podcast platforms, which also includes YouTube. So if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. And thank you so much for tuning into the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast with Flip Livingstone and Steel Roden. Flip, big time bets right now. Mm. I'm going to throw it over to you right away because Ooh. I'm very intrigued for, to see what you you know what your thoughts are for Game 5. With all of these injuries that are coming back and the potential return of Braden Point, Thank What's you. your thought process? First of all, I'm reading some of these quotes from John Cooper. And, you know, we've we've alluded to John Cooper being a bit of a mastermind. And I do want to give that credit because I absolutely love John Cooper as a head coach. I think for some reason he does not still does not get enough credit. And I know he's a Jack Adams award winner, but I still 
do not think somehow he does get enough enough credit. But some of these quotes about Braden Point are pretty wishy-washy. So I'm not going to put too much stock in <laughs> yeah. his return because when I hear a quote like this saying, quote, I can honestly answer this question with an I don't know. Now it's all of a sudden it's an <laughs> I don't know. I'll find out when I get on the plane. Now all of a sudden my belief in the headlines that the Tampa Bay writers are putting out yeah. of point to return in game five possibility little click baby that's okay that's what some of these guys have to do so i don't know if i'm putting too much stock in that return that's number one number two steel i wanted to highlight this point wow i'm good <laughs> man, we talked really so much puns. about Kim- hey sorry man i can't help it i'm getting up there in age i'm entering the dad mode this is here we this is what we do adam fox kale mccarr talked about the historic pace that Kale McCarr is on. Kale McCarr to the nines. Beautiful, beautiful postseason. How about Adam Fox has one more point than Kale McCarr? So maybe let's give a little bit of credit to Adam Fox very quickly because I understand what's going on with Kale McCarr. It is special. It's historic. He is an amazing player. But Adam Fox, in my opinion, should be right there in that conversation. And that's where I'm starting with my first pick of tonight's deal give me an adam fox anytime assist this guy is beautiful in all stages of the ice i'm talking neutral zone i'm talking be in his own end and i'm talking in the offensive zone this guy gets it done in all peripherals of the ice and i'm starting right there with an adam fox anytime apple he's gonna need to answer the bell especially if they're clamping down on mika zibanejad if they get any power play time at all, they're going to need to capitalize, and Adam Fox is going to need to be a big part of that. Give me an Adam Fox anytime assist. That's my first pick, and I believe you're going to like my second, and I do have a third pick. All right, perfect. I only have two picks on the night, um, and just from what I saw from Game 4, how well the Tampa Bay Lightning were able to lock down Mika Zibanejad, you know, we alluded to those other superstars having to step up, as well as those depth players as well, of course. Um, having to step up in those big moments with the lockdown of Mika Zibanejad, with the injuries to Brian Strom and Philip Heedle, I think Artemi Panarin needs to step up in a big way. That's the guy I'm looking towards. As you know, obviously Adam Fox, I think he's been absolutely incredible right there. Like you said, one point more than Kale McCarr in the playoffs. But for me, I think Artemi Panarin really needs to step up in Game Five in a big way. Uh, Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider have been, for the most part, the offensive production. For the New York Rangers, I think Artemi Panarin needs to be uh, needs to step up in a big way, uh, and I'm going with a anytime goal from Artemi Panarin. I absolutely love it, Steel, because hey, you know what it is, baby. It's not as special when there's only one game, but it's still the big flip, triple dip special. They've turned out for me most of the year, and I gotta <laughs> go back to the well. And I'll throw this out there: the total has gone under the number in eight of the last nine playoff games for the Tampa Bay Lightning going back to playoff series. But I'm seeing, I'm calling out a goaltending battle, old school. This is going to be a slobber knocker grind show. (laughs) Both teams know how pivotal this is because I'm saying, who, and this isn't exactly a stretch, whoever takes game three is taking this series. I don't think this is going seven games. I think it's Rangers in six, like we both predicted, or it might be Tampa in six. I hope it's the Rangers in six. I really do. But whoever takes this game five, I think takes the series steal. And I think that kind of pressure, the cup is inches away. I bet you if we look back at this kind of position, deciding game to push the series, you know, one way or the other in the lead up to the cup, I bet you the under hits nine times out of 10. I'm not a good numbers guy, but give me the under 5.5 and I'll finish it right off. My lock of the night, New York Rangers get it done in front of the Garden crowd. That's going to be absolutely rocking. If it goes over the number, I'm okay with it because the juice on the Rangers will be (laughs) worth it, baby, and I'm feeling it. Adam Fox, anytime assist, under the number five and a half, and I'm all kinds of fired up for the New York Rangers at home on the money line steal. That's the triple dip, baby, and I'm going hard in the paint. All right, I'm doing the exact same thing. My lock of the night as well are the New York Rangers on the money line. And I completely agree. I think whoever wins this game will move on to the Stanley Cup finals in uh, after game six as well. I think just the momentum shifts where, you know, whoever wins this, if the Tampa Bay Lightning win three in a row, I think they just lock it in the bag. 
uh, back at home for game six. But if most the New York definitely. Rangers are able to win this game, I thought I think they've, for the most part, for the first three games at least, they carried all of the momentum up until the third period where everything kind of broke down. But I've got the Rangers on the money line. Yep. You've got the Rangers on the money line. We both have the Rangers in six. Hopefully, we're both right. So pencil it in, lock it in, put your money down. Flip and I have been absolutely rolling with these picks for the last two weeks. So, hey, we're obviously doing something right. So just continue to tune in, continue to listen. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. But for your second listen, you have to check out the Locked On NHL. From the first round matchups to each Stanley Cup kiss, Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Just like this podcast right here, it's free and available Monday through Friday. And you'll get it 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. Make sure you hit the subscribe, get the hit the follow button. Once you do, you won't miss any of the episodes. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow.